Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Um, a lot of people have been commenting on the base shaker video I did, um, asking for my settings. A lot of you are running the date and audio uh, base shaker, so you want in my settings. And I've got these pretty good, so I think that these will really help you. Um, and I think that they'll actually fit, make you realise how good you can get the base shakers to feel. So I've got this set up pretty well now, and I'll just basically go through everything in this video, what I've done. Um, and how to change the profiles and stuff. So, with that being said, let's get in with today's video. Right, so here we are inside the Shake It Base Shakers of Simub. And yes, I know I need to do an update. Um, I do need to update this actually just so that I keep uh, everything running smoothly so I might do that after this video but basically what I want to go over today is just uh, just everything that I've done I'm um, explain to you guys so what I suggest you do as I'm doing this video is uh, maybe you know do something like um, just pause the video um, so you can actually see so I'll try not to go too fast so that we can actually go through everything and you can fully understand it so what i'm going to start with first is i'm going to go to my sound output there we go it's connected up um, and i'm using the uh, knob sound external uh, usb uh, amp so we're going to click on this little drop down arrow and as you can see as i discussed in my previous video i'm using the custom channel map so if you haven't watched that video and you just come across this video if you go back into my uh, actual uh, channel into the videos you will see one on the base shakers and I explain more in depth first so I suggest that you watch that one and then come back to this video because it will all make sense so as you can see I've got gear grinding set at a hundred percent on both so basically the front base shaker which is under my pedals and the base shaker that's under my seat the both uh, obviously vibrate at the same sort of strength if you like um and then again we'll just turn these off because we don't need them the gear shift and gears effect 100 percent road impacts i've got so this front one uh, channel one sorry is under my seat and channel two is under my pedals so as you can see the one under my seat i've got turned down to 31 percent and the one under my pedals I always keep at 100 because the way I've mounted this base shaker it's not fitted directly to any sort of plate it's connected to two pieces of extrusion so the actual center doesn't actually transduce through any sort of metallic material it's just sort of sat there and it only transfers through the extrusion and into the rig so I always keep this on high and, and obviously transfer it through the chassis whereas the one under my seat as you can see I'll just turn that to match um, I have it turned a lot down a lot further down so that I don't get um, too much you know from the road feel under my seat uh, under my butt because obviously I don't want it vibrating and, and being really strong because it just doesn't feel good again road rumble I've got turned off this is down to you and what you what your specifics are and what you like and and then the rpms i've got down to 18 percent on the one under my seat and then the one under my pedals i've actually got up to 150 percent now to be honest i don't think this makes any difference i've just been tweaking this so i just keep that 100 obviously you can increase it it's not really going to make a difference because your ample only push out what it can push out so simulated road texture i've got this down to 27 percent and again the front ones are basically all going to be on 100 um if they drop to 99 i don't know why maybe i've caught it when i've been scrolling down but yeah keep the ones on keep your front one on 100 depending on how you've got it mounted you might want to play with it but i suggest keeping it high because like i said you can transfer all that uh that vibration through the chassis and through the rig and then the one under your seat you want to keep it low so basically on rpms for example when it's ticking over this literally just vibrates through the chassis and then the one under my seat is on very low and all i did was sat in a in the pits in a seto corsa and the reason why i like a seto corsa is 
Um, obviously, it depends if you're running windowed mode and stuff, but you tend to find that you can sort of run Simub and uh, not have it sort of like come out. If you, because I don't run in window, I only run in full screen. So when you, for instance, you're not a blister, if you alt tab out of that window, it just puts you back to desktop or puts you into that window. Whereas a seto, you can run it alongside. So I try to use a seto for setting up and testing a lot of the time because it's a lot easier until I get like a base sort of um, setup, if you like, within Simub and the base here, because then I can sort of transfer that into AMS2 or other titles like Race Room, and I can just adjust it up to suit. Um, so, you know, like when I'm doing RPMs, all I've done is sat in the pits with the car or just, just on, on track, wherever, it doesn't matter as long as it's on tick over. And I've literally just sat there and felt the vibration through the through the chassis um, where I feel like you'd, if you were sat in a car and you got the feet your feet on the floor, you'd feel the engine rumbling or ticking over. You know, I know that different cars are smoother and things like that, but I'm talking about if you're sat in, for example, a Caterham that's got a two-litre engine in it that's running cams, um, throttle bodies, and it's quite a lumpy idle and things like that it's quite an unbalanced sort of tick over you'd feel that through the car through the floor and the the engine as it's idling so that's what i did and then i adjusted the one under my seat up till i felt like it wasn't over the top and just got it set up that way and the same with the road texture i just did a bit of driving around a few different tracks going up and over crests and you know long straights you know like on alton park and stuff and just literally adjusted it until i felt like it would if you were in a real car on sort of like that track or a track day for example so on the wheel lock i don't want to feel any of it through my butt because i don't i don't want to feel anything through the wheels locking up through my butt you know majority of the time when you lock the wheels it's probably going to be the front um, and this transfers through the chassis anyway obviously depending on how many transducers you've got i'm specifically talking about my front and my one under my uh, under my seat, which would be my rear. So I don't have anything going through those. Again, up at 100%, and you really don't feel too much. I'm going to talk further on in this video about adjusting it anyway, but like I've said, if you notice, I keep them all at 100% on my front, and then I adjust them up with inside the profile. So wheel slip, we've not got anything on there, and that pretty much covers what uh, I've got turned on. So what I'm going to do now is... Um, go over to the effects profile and show you the uh, inside there so as you can see i'm just going to change this to a seto for now and just discuss that one so we're now on the profiles manager for a seto so as you can see with rpms you can actually test the effect which is good because you can just get a little bit of a, a feel but it's much easier to do it in game because this is only for a split pulse and then it goes off then you click it again it comes on and goes off you don't get a constant vibration from it and as you can see, I'm running this at 26 hertz because I want it to be quite low. Um, I'm not using it as a high priority. I don't want it to override any other settings. Um, I think this is pretty much stock, uh, the white noise effect. And then I've just literally turned it down to 38% in here. Now, you could have that at 100 and turn it down in your output at 38, but it depends on which way you want to do it. I just run this uh, so that the frequency... And this 26 hertz is set at 38 percent and i've got that turned on and the gear shift again this is quite a quite a, a a sort of small pulse um so i've got it at 50 hertz so it feels like you can feel a gear change thudding and the reason why i have that turned up quite high is because you want to feel it over the other effects quite distinctly so uh, when you're going down the road and you can feel the vibrations from the road and stuff you literally want to feel that thud when you change gear like you would in a real car um so that's the reason why i've got this turned up high again it's all personal preference but i just like the feel that when you're going down a road you just feel that little bit of a thud like you'd feel it through a car if you're changing gear in a manual and you drop the clutch and you bang a gear you can literally feel that go through the engine as it transfers through the gearbox and the prop shaft and so on so you feel all that so that's why i've left that at that sort of uh, strength 100 percent 50 hertz uh, and i've got it as high priority because i want it to really stand out and again when i say really stand out it's not very strong so it's not like it's overpowering or a massive thud it just literally gives you a nice little kick under the seat and uh, the pedals at that feel to be honest you feel it more under the seat than you do the pedals so that's why i've got it turned up 
um, simulated road texture. And again, these are all the ones that I've got turned on, guys, as you can see. I'm only running RPMs, gear shift, simulated road texture, wheels lock, road vibration and road impacts. I don't want any of the other ones on. Again, these are not even relevant to the game. So in simulated road texture, um, I think this is pretty much stock as well. And the white noise again stock. I've got this down to sort of 52%. So uh, I'm running a 32 base effect frequency, so 32 hertz. I'm not using it as a high effect. I'm just using the low 32 hertz, so I get a nice feel through the through the chassis. Um, wheels lock. Again, we can do a little test on there, and you can really feel that as we lock up. Uh, you know, I want it to basically f feel it through the pedal more and the chassis so if i do lock up i'm i can literally feel it straight away and i can come off the brake pedal a little bit it's personal preference again whether you want this on um i do quite like the wheel lock uh road vibration this is um you know as you're driving down the road you feel the vibrations of the track and so on i think the simulated road texture is based on speed and this one is based on suspension telemetry so if you go off the track like on a set of Corsa and you're on the grass, you'll really feel the effect of this one. So that's why I've got it turned up. You don't necessarily feel it too much on track. It's more when the suspension is bouncing all over, like if you go over a curb, because this works different to other titles because it's an old game. So here we are inside Road Impacts. Provides localised feedback for bumps and other wheels and impacts on the road. As you can see, it's pretty much similar to like the road vibration. You get a good feedback through that. And again, I've just turned this down to 78%. It's all just set up through, through, through how I think it would feel, just driving around the track in, in specific cars. Now, with an ob sound uh, amp as well, it's also got a little dial on the front, so I can just adjust it up if I feel like it's a little bit too much, because obviously every track's going to be different. If you're on like the Nord Slife, where it's really bumpy, it might feel a bit overpowering. And I can just literally just turn that down a bit and get it to... To feel really nice so that's pretty much my settings for a seto so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to switch over into Arma blister 2 and again we've got rpms at 32 percent gear shift still at 100 percent road impacts 35 percent road rumble now it says that this is not supported in the current game so that's just probably just left alone, even though I've got it turned on. Simulated road texture, 39%. Wheels lock, 97%. Um, and all I've done there is I've just literally gone into the game, um, you know, set it up, had a little test, and just adjusted a few things to suit. Um, you could also just use the same profile in other games. You might not notice a massive difference, but... You know, that's the great thing about this profile manager. You can create a new one and you can create one for each specific game. And it will actually just load up with that with that game. So as you're in your games tab and you load up, say, Automa Ballista 2, once that game loads, boom, you know, straight away it'll load up your profile. Like the sound output, when you look at this, I'll just turn that off. As you can see, these are turned off. And each one, like for the road impacts, I've turned these down. So for the front, it's at 100%. On the rear, it's at 60%. So if we just switch over to the uh, Assetto Corsa one. You can see that they're different. So what I'll do now is I will just switch back to my... Oh, my blister one and we'll go through that and then you can pause this video and uh, take them take that information as well so these settings that i was talking about before were actually my ams2 settings so the ones where it's a hundred percent a hundred percent here um a hundred percent on the front hundred percent on the front 60 on the rear 60 on the rear right road rumble hundred percent on the front 60 percent at the rear these are my AMS2 settings. So we've got road vibration at 20%, 20%, 100%, 100% on the front. Again, as you can see, the lower ones are on the rear. So if you want to pause this video and take these settings, these are my AMS2 ones. Um, again, these work really good. 
I'll just switch back to a set of course now and then we'll go back over those and then you can see the difference. So just click on the profile, click on a set of, click on load. Once it flicks over, we click back onto sound output. And as you can see, these settings are now different. So gear grinding 100%, gear shift 100%. Road impacts on the rear under the seat, 31% and 31%. Should be at 100 on the front. Road rumble, not got it on because it's not allocated inside. Road vibration, 20%, 20% the, under the seat. Again, 100 on the front. RPMs, 18 and 27%. Everything else is turned off apart from wheel lock, I believe. Yep, so wheel lock we've only got on the front. And they're my settings basically for uh, the base shakers. And again, you can see what profile you're in and just follow all these settings. So that's it for today's video. Um, I hope it does help you with understanding a little bit more about the base shakers. Um, again, if you haven't seen the previous video, then make sure you watch that. Uh, drop a comment below and let me know what you think to these settings and if it made your simulator feel good. Obviously, there's a few of you using the B, uh, BTS-2s. I'm running the BTS-1s, date and audio, so it'd be nice to see the difference in the feedback with these settings. So please leave a comment below. Also, if you haven't done so already, then please uh, hit the like button. Um, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for the fu all my future content. Just purely because I'm going to be providing a lot of videos like this that will um, just help you with sim racing. So, you know, we're all passionate about sim racing. We all want to help each other. That's all for today's video, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Me better when I like me better when I'm with